And I think that's the same thing that we're seeing in some of our vocational services. Is it's this constant, you know, maybe a person came five days a week, and, and we talked a lot about that another thing. You know, Jennifer, you don't want to be there five days. Maybe you want to be there four days. Maybe you want to go bowling one day. You know, okay, now it's four days. Now we're going to go down to, well, maybe it's just three days. So they, they will keep their dwindling it down and bringing the person on board to, okay, okay. And all of a sudden, before you know it, their services are down from a, a five-day program to a one- or two-day program. And then how do we know what their level of care is or the families? I mean, if you think about the families and, you know, and you have Billy who comes every day and goes to all day services, goes to work, you know, what changes in his life then? What changes in your life? Mm -hmm. right. If I could give an example on that, I was in a staffing with a, a person that we were working with who had great potential to be in the community, working in the community, and but a lot of motivational issues and some soft skill challenges, and she has a very specific plan of action for training here in house. And I sat in her staffing, and her family care provider said, I know you like karaoke. How come you do karaoke on Fridays instead of coming here? And I was like, you know, I mean, totally bulleting the whole plan to bring this person to a level of responsibility and maturity and you know work on those skills for community employment and they're telling them, we know you love that food. Well and, and you know yeah. so it's you know it's a young person track. You know we're trying to right. so my question is well, what's motivating the behavior of the system as a whole? And what's motivating the behavior of the system as a whole is that there's this notion that you have to reduce spending in order to make the system sustainable. And that may or may not be true. I, I don't think sending people back to institutions is making the system sustainable. I think it's taking it in the wrong direction. And so the question is, what does sustainability really mean? And how do you build it? Do you build it from the top down with orders to cut funding by a certain amount each year? Or do you build it from the bottom up by saying, here's a person-centered plan that we need to fund, which is what they do in Michigan. And assuring that that's what that person gets instead of having the care organization says saying no you don't need that much because it's that no you don't need that much which is being motivated by the dollars by how much money is in the system and their uh, drive to cut it down to the bare minimum which you know is not when you look at the uh, the act in which um, care protection and advocacy agencies yeah. are funded which is the developmental disabilities uh, uh, um, it's the PAD, uh, Protection Act for Developmental Disabilities. Right. It's under the Administration the Act. Yeah, the DD Act. The DD Act has a list of uh, 15 principles, I think it is, or 14. And I'll we'll share those with you. It's yeah. something I put together for the 18 so that you can take a look at it. But one of the principles is that people get the kinds of services that they need. And that, you know, uh, you know, protection and advocacy agencies like Disability Rights Wisconsin are there to help advocate for that. And you know, I appreciate Tom's willingness to have discussions about what people really need and, and his concern about family care uh, and, and the other issues that we're discussing here. Yeah, you know, and I think it's, um, you know, it is a serious issue. issue um, and the part of, um, you know, because DRW has the Ombudsman Program for Family Care, it's a very um, difficult place for DRW to be in because, you know, we operate the protection and advocacy system, as Tom has mentioned, that really looks at promoting community living in advocating on those things and uh, being a, uh, a, strong, a strong supporter with the ombudsman program their whole role is to not really address all of these issues but help an individual navigate through the system and so when we talk about the rate setting and you know the choices for individuals that's all the, that's all coming in from the protection and advocacy aspect of really making sure an individual has a choice and that they you know if they're getting these discharge notices that they really have an opportunity to visit their place where they're going to be living, um, just like anybody else would, and really choose, you know, which one's best for me, where do I fit in, you know, what's going to have the best supports for me, and that it's member driven, not dollar driven, mm -hmm. and that's our, and that's our concern, because we do hear stories, we actually had a, um, our board goes around the state every quarter and has listening sessions, and so the DRW board um, was just in Rice Lake the first part of September, and really, um, and we heard a lot from family members whose um, loved ones was had their place um, where they lived, and then they were they were transferred left and right, and it just it was a huge 
um, burden for, for the individual. Not only getting accustomed to a place of living, but then being picked up and moved in, in 30 days and adjusting to a new environment and new staff and then being picked up again and moved and it was, it was, it was traumatic for the individual. And so we heard a lot of stories up in Rice Lake along those lines. Thank you.